is up guys, this is Max Square, and today we're taking a look at neon signs and neon text inside of After Effects. Now we are gonna be using a template, but it's gonna dramatically increase and speed up our workflow. So it's gonna save you a ton of time from learning other tutorials or all those kind of things. You just have to watch this video, download the template, and you're good to go. So you can find this template on videohive.net. It is gonna run you about 29 bucks. But honestly, with what you can do with this project, it is actually really worth it in my opinion. If you think about how much time you're actually saving, it really feels like you're getting it for free. I do wanna give a shout out to the author who gave me a free download of this project to test out. This is the same author who brought you the shimmer effect for your photos as well as that dust particle explosion. He just got some awesome products, I'm a huge fan. And so thank you again for giving me this download. I'll put a link down in the description where you can find this project as well as his other products. So once you have purchased it, you'll get a zip file that looks just like this. We can go ahead and open it. And you'll have an assets folder, which you actually don't really need to mess with, nothing to install here. And then we have two different After Effects files. One is just a demo of the different things you can create with this template. And then there's the master project file, which we'll use to edit and put in our own work. And then there is just a text file that explains some of the resources that are used. This is really worth checking out. You may be a little bit like me who just wants to jump straight into After Effects and start messing around, but it is worth just taking a look at this file. It does include some of the free fonts and then also some paid font options that he uses in the file. You definitely wanna install the free ones if you can. They don't take up any space, if at all. It's really gonna help you get that look just right for your neon signs and designs. But what's really cool is there's actually a full hour long tutorial where he explains everything you can do in this product. I actually didn't know how powerful this was until I watched the full video. Yes, I watched the full video. And there's tons of stuff you can actually do and so much so that I'm not actually gonna be able to show you in just this video. I'm gonna kind of cover each thing briefly and skip over a couple little parts. But if you wanna learn just everything you can do, if you run into any trouble, definitely be sure to refer to this link. I'll link this again just down below in case you're looking for anything. And that'll definitely help you, but if you don't feel like watching that full thing, you can hopefully get what you need just from this video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. So I know you're all wondering what this looks like. I know it's been a while since you watched the demo already. We're already two or three minutes into this video. You wanna see again. So this is just one of those different scenes you can create. This is just the example right off the bat. But basically, if we take a look at the arrangement up here, you can see that the file is split up into two main sections. We have these five steps right here, and these are gonna be if you need to create unique scenes. You actually have up to 10 different what they call modules. So if you need to create 10 unique scenes, you can do so in this first section of the template and you'll just go down those five different folders for those steps. But then if you wanna just jump into a specific template, you'll see that you actually have a templates folder and these are gonna be specific scenes, but you can only create one at a time. So this is really if you just have one scene or setting you need to create. So the first step is really simple. You can just open up that first module and jump into the text. So again, it's really crucial that you do have this font installed because that's really gonna give you the best look. And so the way we're gonna edit this is just click into that text layer and we can type in whatever we want. I'll type in max square. You may have to resize that just a hair. And then of course we wanna center that just because we want it to be pixel perfect. So I'm just gonna go to my line tools and adjust that. And then what we wanna do is actually hit Command D, that's gonna duplicate the layer, and it should automatically set the bottom layer to Luma key for the track mat, but if not, just make sure you click on track mat and select Luma mat, and you should be good to go. That just helps the project know which layers are which. You don't really have to mess around with it too much. And if we jump over to module one, we give it a second to render, you'll see that start to update. So Max Square is good to go, it's already loaded in the scene. But then we can move on to step two, which is gonna be more detailed work. There's actually three subsections in this step that we can work on. We have control over the caps, the details, and the ties. So if we jump into the caps, these are gonna be specific little pieces that we put above each letter. And you can totally mess around with this as much as we want. So what you can do is actually just enable these compositions and you'll see we actually get these weird little caps kind of floating around the composition. And the reason they look weird is because we haven't actually put them over our text. So let's go ahead and select that first layer. We can zoom in here and really see what we're doing. And we're just gonna drag that over one of the text layers. And we're gonna hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation and just rotate that a little bit. Position that so it looks right on. 
And then we'll finish this up for the other two and I'll probably speed this up just to save you time. And there we go, we've added a couple caps and you can totally feel free to duplicate these and add as many caps as you want. I'm gonna jump back to the module one demo just so you can see what we're actually changing in the end product. And you'll see that we get these little end caps right here and this makes it a little bit more realistic. And this is kind of an optional look. I don't love this effect too much. I don't really like it to be overdone. So I might even just put one at the beginning and then one at the end for the E, kind of delete the ones in the middle. It's totally up to you. Just depends on the look you're going for. But let's go into the details of step two. And this is where we can begin to add some specific places we want the neon sign to highlight. So if we just enable these details compositions, you'll see we get these little patches kind of scattered around the text. And basically what we'll do is just move these around to draw the eye to certain parts of the text. So you can really put these wherever you want. Just kind of scatter them. You do probably want to highlight them over a specific part of the text so they're not just kind of floating randomly. Again, I'll jump back so you can see what we're doing. And so if we just zoom into the queue there, you'll see we have a little patch and that just adds a little bit of detail as well. And then lastly, we get these ties. So if we zoom in here, you'll see we get these little kind of X's and, and same thing, just put them in specific places. It may make sense to kind of put them halfway through a letter or kind of where specific things are joining up. Again, you do want to put them over somewhere where the text is actually, you know, lying. You don't want to just have them floating randomly. If we jump back to module one, you can see those ties again. Now, I don't really love using all three of these at once. My favorite is probably just the details. And then I decide to disable the caps and the ties. Again, it's totally up to you, whatever look and style you're going for. But one thing you might notice is that all three of these effects are really subtle. Some of them might be a little bit more obvious, like the caps are pretty bold. But again, you could go back and change the transparency or the color and just mess with it as much as you want. So that's step two, we can move on to step three and that's gonna be our wires. We can just double click on module one again. And before I actually show you how to do this, let's jump back to the preview where I've enabled some of these wires and you can kind of see what it will actually do in the end. Now this is completely random. It may look really stupid to you, but this is just something quick I made. And basically what it's doing is just drawing those metal wires and those rods around whatever you want in the text. So this again, just adds another level of realism as you know, a lot of neon signs are gonna have pipes and other kind of rods and wires connected to it in real life. It's not just, you know, a piece of glowing text. There's obviously some other electrical stuff going on behind the scenes. And so let's jump into module one wires and you can see the two rods that I made. So I'm just gonna select those two layers and delete it. What you wanna do is make sure your pen tool is selected at the top. You can just hit G to jump there and we can zoom in. And what we're gonna do is just select a piece of our text and then we're gonna select just somewhere random off the screen and we're gonna click and drag. And as we do that, you'll see it, it will actually round out that line. So it's not as exact and just straight. And if you wanna keep going with that line, just keep clicking and dragging however much you want. But if you wanna create a new wire, just click down in our layer section and that'll deselect that layer. And then you can click again to wherever you want your next wire. So I might do somewhere over here kind of go out a little bit. And again, just really mess around with this until you get the look that you want. So that's a little bit more realistic. You know, I might even just delete this middle one and just have one on either side because I think that looks a little bit more simple. And there you go, that's pretty much what the wires do. All right, so now we are done with steps one through three. We can open up step four and we can actually start to play around with the final product and animation. So we can open up module one, which is what I've been using for the preview of our whole product. I'm just gonna close out these other layers for now. And right off the bat, you can see what our product looks like, but this is also where we can edit a lot of the scene controls. We can change out the background, the glow intensity, and this is where you're probably gonna spend the most of your time. So if we open up the neon controller and we look at our effect controls, you can see just how many options and settings we have control over. So if we open up the neon animator, we could set this to something like five and you'll see that that glow just gets a little bit less intense after we give it a second to render. So obviously it's barely there. You can change stuff like the bulb texture, which right now it's set to 60. And if you go down, you really won't notice too much. But if you bring it up to something like 300, you'll start to see kind of that noise and more metal material look. I'm gonna set it back to 60 for now, but you can also mess with the bulb hue. Now you can also change this color back in the original first step where we edited our text. So whatever color you set there will actually affect the look here, but if you don't wanna go back through all the 
work of opening up that comp and rechanging all that, you can just come to the hue and change it to whatever you want and that'll fix the color for you. Now, if we look at the bottom here, you can see we can actually disable some of those details and the wires we're doing in step two and three. And one thing I would recommend is to actually leave all those effects on in the original comp. So in step two and three, just leave all the work you had. And then if you decide you don't like it, you can just disable it here. You're not actually deleting the work. And then if you decide you want it, you don't have to do it all again. So for example, I can go here and disable the wires and you'll see it's actually hidden on this comp, but I can just enable it again if I decide I want it. And so again, there's tons of settings in here, but another thing we're gonna look at is the scene controller layer. And this is where you can affect the actual background. So right now we've got a wood wall background. So if I disable that, we can go to brick and enable that if we want that look. Uh, maybe if you want something a little bit more simple, you could just enable the gradient wall behind that. You also get control over what that gradient color is. Now, while there are a couple of settings that you're not gonna notice too much unless you really max it out or bring it really way down, there are a couple effects like the fog, which if we enable, we get this really cool smoke looking effect at the bottom, and you can totally move this up or down if you don't want it to be too obvious. You can play around with the adjustment of that and mess around with it until you get the look you want. So there's really a ton of settings I wouldn't overlook. Even with this one fog setting, we can control the width and the depth, the sharpness, the density, opacity, tons of different things. So I wouldn't overlook a lot of these settings. It's really worth messing around with the project. And just for the purpose of the tutorial to keep things moving, I'm gonna move on to the last step and that is our camera selection. So this is actually gonna be, if you are animating this, meaning if you don't wanna just take a still and move on with your life, you can actually use a camera in here to get some animation going. So what I'm gonna recommend is you bring up your finder window with the original download, go to assets and go to camera examples and you're gonna see we have 20 different MP4s with different camera animations. So this is gonna give you a preview of the different 20 camera options we have. So these are different angles, it's gonna go in and out of focus, come from different size, tons of different looks. So just keep going through them until you find one that you like. I'm gonna go with this camera eight because it's a little bit more simple. And so what you would do is actually go into the camera selection folder, open up the camera you want. What we're gonna do is select camera controller, hold down the command key and select camera and hit command C to copy them. And then we're gonna to go to module one. We're gonna click camera controller and camera, hit delete and hit paste. And then we're gonna drag them below that scene controller. And that's gonna let the project know that that's the camera you wanna use. And then your entire project will be fit to that camera. And after you give it some time to render, you'll have your entire animation in that template ready to go. Now in the demo that I showed you at the beginning of this video, you may have noticed that there are some logos in this scene and you can totally add them in. It's a little bit more work, but it's definitely possible. So I wanted to spend a couple of seconds just showing you how to do that really quick. But we're gonna go back to step one and go into the module one logo creator. And you'll see we have five different steps. So we're just gonna open that first one and you can drag in a logo here. And that's all you have to do for this step, but then you can go into step two and you'll see that your logo has kind of been split up into these lines on this gray background. What you'll do is actually just click this circle and drag it around until it starts to highlight the main parts of your photo. So right here we have this kind of square queue. So I'm gonna drag it to the middle of the queue border and that'll pick up the highlights. And because this logo is only one solid color, that's actually all I would have to do. But there are two other compositions where you'd mess with the other different colors where you have primary, secondary, and tertiary, ter the third one. And you can mess around with those as that tutorial shows you. And I'm sure most of you have multicolor logos. So you'll probably wanna go through these steps. And then you wanna go back to module one's text layer and just disable those text layers, so just your logo showing up. And if we jump back to our main module, again, give it some time to render, then our logo will be thrown into that comp. Now, of course, your details and all of the wires and stuff are gonna be misplaced because you were doing it for your text, so you'll have to go through and add that again, but it is definitely possible to add in your logos. So guys, that is it for this brief overview of this Neon Sign kit. I hope you all enjoyed, but if you run into any issues or have any questions, be sure to drop a comment down below or check out that full tutorial. And you can always email the author. He's really good about getting back to you and he's always happy to help. Anyway, that has been it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.